Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's daughter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. Welcome to the School of Miracles. We're opening our Bibles this morning to the Psalms 34. If you have a Bible, Psalms 34. We'll read a few verses out of this psalm. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Do you do that? <laughs> Most of the time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Delivered me from all of my fears. I put this verse into practice many, many years ago when I was afraid of the night, darkness. God set me free from that. It will, he will you too if you'll put it into practice. Amen. Just do what he says do and you'll get what he says you can get. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all of his troubles. That sounds like a good thing right there. Saved him from all of his troubles. Amen. The angel of the Lord encamps round those who fear him and delivers them. Yes. Amen. Here's my verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Amen. Verse 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of what? All their what? All their troubles. All their troubles. What you going through today? Well, what are you doing there? God can deliver you out of all of your troubles and you can enjoy the life that God has for you. It's called abundant life. Amen. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I remember one time I was listening to a radio preacher traveling somewhere. And this was his theme, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But see, he never did give us the rest of the verse. <laughs> And I said, read it, man, read it, read it, read the rest of it. He never did finish that verse. So let me finish it for you this morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of what? Them all. Them all. Did you know your circumstances are really God's opportunity? Probably never seen them like that, but that's the way it is. God wants to prove himself strong on your behalf. Amen. The only way he can do that is to use your circumstances to come into your life and prove himself strong. I don't know how many years ago it was, but I remember I put this in my Bible. It's a prophetic word that Marcelo gave us many, many years ago. God said, don't look to the bigness of your need, Look to the bigness of your God. Amen. Your circumstances are hindrances to seeing my abilities. If you keep your eyes on your circumstances, the devil will use your circumstances to defeat you and to accuse the word of God, the written and the living word. Your victory is in keeping your eyes on the bigness of your God and his abilities. Amen. He has promised to take you step by step by step, not only once, 
but step by step, and each step will be a miracle. Yeah. If you've been around for a while, you've seen, you've seen some of this stuff happen in your own life. God is the God of your circumstances. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He uses your circumstances as an opportunity to show himself strong on your behalf. We talk a lot about God's ability. We talk about the might of God. But if I ask you today to come and step right here and tell people what God has done for you this week, I wonder how many people could actually come up here and say, say something. Something God's done for you, not last year, this week. Come on up here then. What has God done for you this week? This week? This week. He has sent children, or not children, young adults to my house to roof my house. It was free. They had to, they completely re-roofed re my whole house in one day. And I know that was God because was I didn't free? have the money. It was free. Everything was free. Materials, What's her name? labor, and you all. You address them? But he sent them to me. He okay. had to because... Okay. Um, I'm working part time on my job. I couldn't get a loan to as a bank to have my house roof. And I just prayed that God send me the answer. Okay. He sent them. That's this week. And that's this week. Praise God. Tuesday. <laughs> well, we talk a lot about the glory of God. Let me ask you personally this morning: What do you think the glory of God is? When you think about the glory of God. What do you think it is? Presence. Presence of God. Anything else you want to say? The glory. When you think of the glory of the Lord, what comes to mind? I feel those wheels are turning. <laughs> Holiness, God's goodness. Hmm? His favor. Hmm? His presence there. Eh? Let me tell you this. This is the first thing I believe about the glory of God. I believe it's God's visitation to us. I don't know for some of you how long it's been since you've really had a visitation from God. We go to church. We sing the songs. We listen to the preachers on TV and radio. But you just think about it. how long has it been since you've actually had what I would call a visitation from God? When you knew, without a doubt, that you have had a visitation from God. Do you think you need one? I think all of us need one. I think all of us could use what I would call a fresh visitation yes. from God. Yes. You see, God likes to keep things fresh in your life. Yes. He likes to keep things moving in your life. So first of all, it's a fresh visitation from God. Who doesn't want that for yourself and for your family? Amen. 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 Number two, it's the glory realm of eternity. There's something about the glory realm. There's something about that place that we call eternity. There's glory there. And when God lets some of that glory come to your life and my life in this earth, we call it the glory realm. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Then we call it the atmosphere of heaven. Atmosphere. That's it, right, ma'am? Yep. Atmosphere. And she's always hey, correcting me. You know, that's what it is <laughs> when you got educated folk in your family. Atmosphere of heaven invades your life. God's got to do something for the Christians in America. Many of them are falling by the wayside. Many of them are turning their back upon God. Things are just not working right in their life. And many of them are just forsaking the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? I remember when this place used to be wall to wall. Balconies filled. Chairs put out. Where are those people are now? Just check around and see where they are. I'm telling you, God's got to do something in his church. Yeah. He's got to do something for his people. Yeah. 
I call it a fresh visitation. Something has got to happen in your life and my life. Can you say amen? Well, what does this glory bring to us? Well, it brings a fresh visitation. For one thing, it just refreshes us in our faith. It brings the manifested presence of God. People can talk about the presence of God. They can sing about the presence of God. But we're talking about the manifested presence of God. It's something you see. It's something you feel. Something you hear. It's something you know. God manifesting himself to you. It's a revelation of the goodness of God. I've got to go back to Exodus 33. Anytime I talk about the goodness of God, I want to show you where this goodness of God came from. Moses prayed a couple of prayers in the book of Exodus. He's leading the children of Israel. He had to stop several times and remind God, these are not my folk now, they're yours. But in this leadership abilities that Moses had, some wanted to go on and some wanted to go back. And sometimes you don't know who's who till the crisis hits. The crisis has hit. And God says, okay, this is the way it is. Moses, I'm going to send my angel before you, but I'm not going to go up among you. If you do, I'm going to have to hurt some people. <laughs> He said, they're very stiff-necked. They're hard-headed. I don't want to have to deal with them the way I want to deal with them. But this is the how the show goes. And Moses starts talking to God now. And what happens in Exodus 33, God actually opens up the door and allows us to hear this conversation that he's having from heaven with a man on the earth whose name is Moses. Moses is tired. Moses is trying to figure out how he can get out of being the leader of these people. I might have been trying to figure it out 50 years. <laughs> but God just keeps him going on and on. And, and he said, okay, i tell you what. If I have found favor in your sight, you know my name, you know all about me, Show me your ways. And God did. But that's not all he wanted. He, he wasn't satisfied there. The second prayer he prayed was, Lord, show me your glory. Now, apparently Moses was about like me. He didn't know a lot about the glory of God. See, I just know to follow him and to obey him. I don't know a lot about his glory. But I'm going to tell you something. The glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Amen. So you need to get ready for it. The glory of God's coming. It's increasing in the church. It's increasing in the earth. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. We'll know when it shows up. <laughs> so he said, Lord, show me your glory. And this was probably one of the first houses of prayer that we've ever found in the scriptures. And it wasn't in the church. Moses had to go outside of the camp. He had to go outside of the religious community. And there was a place out there that Moses would go and talk to God. It was called the tent of meeting. <clears throat> Moses and God would meet together and talk share with each other. Isn't that an awesome thing? Amen. You think you can do that with God? Well, sure you can. You can talk to God. I was up last night from 12 to 1230 praying for a fella. I talked to him today. He said, well, dear God, I was in the bed then. <laughs> the Lord should have told me that. Bless God. And I wouldn't have been praying for him 30 minutes like that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that Shelby look. <laughs> so Moses has prayed two prayers. He said, Lord, show me your ways. And now he says, show me your glory. God's weighing these things out that he's hearing from his servant Moses. Let's pick it up here. Where are we? Let's pick it up in verse 18. 
This is the second prayer that Moses has prayed. Please show me your glory. And then he said, I will make, this is God talking back to Moses now, he said, I will make all of my goodness pass before you. He's not talking about the goodness of God, he's talking about the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But see, when God tunes in, he doesn't call it glory, he calls it his goodness. So we're already finding out here, the goodness of God is really the glory of God. Some of you have been enjoying the goodness of God for a long, long time. Amen. 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 Well, how do you do... Let me just say this. Pray over your family. Pray for the goodness of God to be upon your family. Pray for God to keep you healthy. Pray for God to strengthen you. Straighten your thinking out. Pray for God to help you in your everyday walk. We're talking about the Almighty God. We're talking about a God who has the ability to help us and to turn things around in our lives. Think about what you're going through today. What are you going through right now? Maybe, maybe it's not having your house shingled. Might be. But God can take care of that too. And it won't cost you a dime. Hallelujah. See, I could write a song about that. How long has it been since he singled your house? <laughs> the goodness of God. God is good. I want to say that again. God is good. Why don't you just say that? Tell the person beside of you. God is good. On the other side. God is good. If you listen to the devil, you won't think he's such a good God. But he really is good. God Amen. is Amen. good. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above. His gifts are good too. But the goodness of God. Well, what's going on in your life? Is it good or is it bad? You don't have to go far to find out what it is. If it's good, it's from God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? So God says here, I will make all of my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. What's, what's, what's the verse that he's, what's he prayed? To see what? God hasn't mentioned the glory. He's talked about his goodness. He says here, you cannot see my face for no man can see, my, see me and live. And the Lord said, here's a place by me and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be when my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you in my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, my face, you shall, shall not be seen. So Moses is praying in two prayers. Show me your ways. Show me your glory. We think about the glory of God, we don't think about something we can see or feel or hear, or touch, experience. But when Moses got finished talking about seeing the glory, God talked to him about what? Goodness. The goodness. It's hard to hear a message about God's goodness today. It's all about sin. It's not about the goodness of God. If it weren't for the goodness of God, you wouldn't have to worry about sin or sinner. They would all be over. It's the goodness of God. And that's a part of the gospel, I think, that we forget so many times. We're always quick to judge people. We're always real quick to criticize people. 
But can I tell you, it's the goodness of God that's upon your life that blesses you and blesses your family. If you don't know how to pray, why don't you just pray for the goodness of God to be upon yourself and your family? The goodness of God. God's good. I said God is good. He always is good. Everything he has for us is good. So here's the goodness of God. It's the revelation of the goodness of God. You see, it's good for folks to know that. And the goodness of God is the work of God. So it has to come by revelation to us. This is something God has to reveal to us. I can preach to your head, but if your heart's not in it, you'll forget about it before you leave this place. So what are you talking about, Pat? I'm talking about the goodness of God. The goodness that comes from God himself is a revelation that comes to you. That has to be revealed to you. Then you'll know that you know that you know God is good. Amen. God is is good. Hallelujah. God is good. That means if he's good, he didn't put that cancer on you, did he? If he's good, he didn't put that attitude in you, did he? God's good. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, what does the glory bring to us? Well, it brings the goodness of God, a revelation of that. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, that's after 1 Corinthians, right? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So we all, say we all. We all. With unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, or being transformed, or being changed into the same image from glory to glory, and as by the Spirit of the Lord. Say changed. Well, I don't know where I like that change. What? Listen, if God is good and he's changing you into his glory, then you're going to be good. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is a good God. Amen. But I see in these verses here, there's, there's an anointing for you when the glory begins to increase in your life. There's an anointing for you to see by the Spirit and the Spirit. There be things that you will see in people and upon people and around people. There will be things that you will see by the Spirit because the glory of the Lord is increasing in your life. More and more every day you're becoming more and more and more like Jesus. God's working that image in you. Blessed be the Lord. Can you? I'm talking about the image that you were created with. The image of God. There's a little bit of God in every one of us. And the more of God that gets in you and gets working through you, the better you'll be able to see in the spirit. And what you'll find is there's some folks you just need to stay away from. You listen to me? Huh? You're going to see a lot of them. And God will give you something I call discernment. That's the ability to see. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You just think if God would have given you that 10, 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> you probably wouldn't be in the mess you're in now and you'd probably need more than one pastor to get you out of that mess. But when God gives you this gift, it's the ability to see. My wife had that years ago. She'd say, uh, Vernon said, watch that person. I said, what do you mean watch that person? And she said, you need to watch that person. I said, well, I just don't see what you're seeing. She said, well, don't worry about seeing what I'm seeing. Just do what I'm saying do. <laughs> watch the person. I said, why should I watch them? You just need to watch them. 
So my wife has had this gift of seeing for a long, long time. She's full of the wisdom of God. If you don't believe it, just call her sometime and talk to her a minute. Ask her a couple questions see what she unloads on you. <laughs> you might not like it. <laughs> Everything she tells me is good, though, because it comes from God. Can you say amen? Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. Our Lord is building his kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for his kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube.